Welcome to Three Crosses Ferry Company. I'm Caleb, and we're going to be shoeing Jeb today. Jeb is probably one of my favorite horses on my list. He is a half draft. He wears a size 4 draft shoe or a size 5 Kirkhart. Look at the massive bone structure this horse has. As my old man would say, he could pull a tractor out of a swamp at midnight. Now you'll notice I struggle a little bit to pull this shoe off. It doesn't come right off. I'm using size 7 nails in Jeb's feet. My normal nail is a Slim Blade 5 and is significantly smaller than these nails. I should have broken the clinches, but normally I can get him to break loose with just my pullers. And there the shoe comes off. This shoe is about 15 inches of steel and it's three quarters of an inch wide by seven eighths thick. So that shoe's been used, I think, twice now. It's been reset once. We're gonna give him new shoes today. I wasn't able to find the same brand of shoe. And we're actually going to build Jeb some new shoes out of concave steel, and that will be in a future video. But today we're going to be using Kirkhart shoes, uh, size five. I think it's amazing when you watch how I peel the sole out of there. You'll notice there's not a, like, there's just a dusting of dead tissue, which is kind of what we want to see. This is the perfect time to reshoe this horse. He's not super long. He's not super short. He has a nice amount of growth. This is a seven week cycle for Jeb. I think eight weeks for him would be a little long as we might get a little too much growth. And I did notice that the shoes were starting to clink when I got here. This happens when the horse's nails begin to become loose and allow the shoe to have just a little play in it. So when he's walking, it just makes a clink sound. It doesn't have that nice solid step to it. When I'm nipping, I'm doing my best to keep those nippers flat. I'm using EZ GE race nippers, so they're a 14 rate nipper. And I'm using a Green Tang Heller XL rasp. Now wait, when you look at the hoof wall here, you can see that it's it's almost the same width all the way around. Super um, uniform. This is what good genetics looks like. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of toe showing over the edge of the shoe. And if you look back, you'll notice that that was where the hoof wall was a little wide. So that's flare and we're going to address that with a rasp later on. My size seven nails do not fit these shoes, so I'm using a CH XL5, a Kappel XL5, I think is what it's called. They're not my favorite nails, but they are a little bit longer nail, and with Jeb's hoof wall, you need that long nail to be able to reach up and grab. But you'll notice that some of my nails are barely coming out and that's because there's just a lot of hoof wall and a lot of hoof to go through before the nail can pop out. Also with something this big, the higher your nails are, the better the chance of the shoe staying on. Sometimes with these big horses, it's necessary to clip them, but I haven't lost shoes off of Jeb, so I haven't had to do that. What I was doing there was checking level. I'm going to pull that nail because it didn't quite pop out enough for me to get a good clinch on it. And by that I mean it needs to pop out enough so I can bend the nail over. You'll notice that I, I stuck the uh, nail in the hammer and kind of bent it a little bit. That's one of the tricks uh, of our trade is that if we want a nail to come out sooner, we bend it a little more towards the outside of the hoof wall and it'll come out faster. What I'm doing here is called blocking. This is just setting that nail into the chute. Some farriers don't think it's necessary. 
the guys that taught me, that's what we did, and so that's what I do. I do think it gets the shoe a little tighter and definitely sets those nails in the shoe really nice. So again, we're gonna address that flare that we noticed earlier by taking our rasp at the same angle as the hoof wall. One of the easy ways to tell where you have flare is to simply take your rasp and set it up against the hoof wall on its edge. And wherever there's a bubble or where you can see daylight is usually where there's distortion. So if you set the rasp up against the hoof wall and the toe drops away and there's daylight at the toe, then you've lobbed the toe or he's wearing the toe off. If you set the rasp up against the hoof wall and there's daylight in the center of the hoof, kind of in the center of the rasp where you've set it up against the hoof wall, that means we have flare. And what I'm doing here is called a quarter crease. This doesn't necessarily serve a particular purpose. I don't know, you probably don't need to do this step, but I think it makes the shoe look better and it makes my work look better. Now I'm rasping just under the nails. Some guys use a gouge. Um, I don't use one. I usually just use my rasp and rasp just, just a little bit under the nails and then bend them over. A gouge does make it look super pretty. When you finish a horse's hoof, um, there's actually requirements for certification when you're finishing. It should look a certain way when you get done. When I'm clinching, according to the AFA certification, you should have a nice square clinch. It shouldn't be too little and it shouldn't be too long. It should sit nice and flat against that hoof wall. And as you can see, they look pretty good. I think those are some solid clinches right there. Now I just rasp them a little bit. I'm just dusting them and I'm taking off any sharpness or any edges to them that could possibly cut Jeb when he's moving. Again, gonna finish. So the my rasp has two sides. It has the hard side, which takes off a lot of hoof. And then it has the soft side or the finished side that takes off a little hoof. But the finished side makes it look more finished and sanded and more polished. This is Horseshoe Secret Hoof Oil. I really like this stuff. It's really good for their hooves. It uh, adds some nutrients to them as well as some moisture. And I think it makes your shoe job just look absolutely beautiful. Now we're gonna move on to the second foot. And I changed what I did on the first foot a little bit. This time I'm going to cut those clinches off and see if it pulls that shoe a little easier. It doesn't seem like a whole lot holding them in there, but those clinches do make a difference. And I would say that that made a huge difference just by taking those clinches off a little bit. Yeah, that shoe came off so much easier this time. Notes for next time. One thing about these half drafts is their genetics are such that they have really good feet. They have big, wide feet. That they're proportional to the rest of their body. They support the rest of their, their bone structure and their weight. Um, one of the things that has happened in the last 50 years of horses is we have bred out all of the quote unquote desirable qualities. What I would like to see in a horse, good feet, good bone structure, and what we've come up with is a very small bone, little foot, big bodied horse, especially in the quarter horses. And I think this is super unfortunate because Jeb is a perfect example of what you want to see in a horse's foot. Now again, I'm cleaning out the commissures there. I don't want dirt and bacteria to be trapped under them. So I take my knife to it and I clean them clean them up and make sure that there's nothing trapped underneath. Then I come in with my nippers, run a nice flat nip line. I cannot stress that enough. Running a flat nip line will save you so much time and energy. And it's actually one of those skills that can be very hard. I still struggle with it some days. I do love the fact that when I do a nip line that looks almost perfectly flat and 
comes off in one big, beautiful chunk. I am actually kind of disappointed. You'll see that I don't have my red loop knife anymore. I lost it. I think it must have fallen out on the road or I set it down or it fell out of my shafts at somebody's house. And I am not liking my new loop knife. It is not the same knife and I'm really missing it. Again, getting that foot flat, ready to take a shoe. A lot of times with these big drafts, I like to heat the shoe up and burn it on, but Jeb is not okay with that. So we don't hot shoe Jeb. So the way that I uh, nail my shoes up, I'll take my shoe, I set it on there, I get it placed where I want, and then I take a nail and I put it in the back nail hole to hold it in place and I just tap it in. I don't drive it all the way. I get it where I want it and then I just Tap that nail in, and then I'm going to make sure I place where I, that it's right where I want it to be, check my fit, and then I'm going to place my other nail, and I'm going to drive that. The reason that I do that is years ago I was having trouble with my shoe moving on me when I was nailing it. It would slide forward, it would slide back, I'd have, it wouldn't be quite placed where I want it. By being able to set one nail just a little bit and then drive the other one, it holds that shoe in place better. And that's that's the trick that I use. Some people don't do that. It works really well for me. I've seen some guys, they can like hold the shoe kind of in place and drive their nail. I'm just not that talented. I really like having that nail just partially drove to hold it in place. The only time this doesn't work really well is when I'm working on a green horse who likes to pull and move. And then I usually just have to drive a nail and then get it set and then drive another nail. It's extremely dangerous. I don't think people understand how dangerous those nails are. The, where we're working, your femoral artery and a lot of really important bodily functioning pieces of equipment are right there where those nails are. And trust me, getting stabbed by one of them sucks really bad. So we've had several comments asking questions about this and I kind of want to address it. So the hoof stand that I use is a Hoof It USA hoof, hoof stand. What makes this hoof stand unique is their post. Their post is a two-in-one. It has a post, which you can set the hoof on like I am here, or it has a cradle also, which you can put the foot the other way and lay it in while you're working on it. I like this because in the past I used like hoof jack and I've used a couple of different kinds of stands. This is the only one that I didn't have to change out attachments or carry two stands. I can carry one stand and it does both the jobs that I needed to do without any modification. The other thing that I like about it is it has a, a better adjustment. Uh, hoof jack used to jam up on me. They had a uh, screw that you would screw in to hold the, the jack in place and it would get gummed up and it wouldn't screw and unscrew and so I would end up with a jack on some horses being too short and then on the other horses being too tall. have not had that issue with this hoof jack and I've been running this one for about a year and a half now. Holds up super well. If you're one of those people that likes to clean your horse's hooves out, which I think everyone would be good to clean your horse's hooves out, you probably shouldn't wait until the farrier comes every eight weeks to clean your hooves out. So this is a great option. You know, I have a lot of clients that uh, have trouble getting under the horse and have trouble getting that horse to hold its foot up. This is a great option. This is something you can put in your shed and, and just take out when you're gonna clean the horse's hoof and you will be amazed how much easier this makes it on your back. I think they're online for like 180 bucks. And it's a great investment, and trust me, it makes it so much easier on your back. But we're going to finish off the hoof. Again, you can see those clinches. They're nice and square, and they're pretty uniform. There's not one that's longer or shorter than the other one. And then we're going to use our hoof oil. We're going to put a little bit of that on there, finish this foot up, clean it up. I just love this foot. I love Jeb as a horse. Jeb is one of the coolest horses I get to work on, um, and I love that he has big feet, big, beautiful feet, big, beautiful black feet. Um, there is an argument over whether black feet are stronger than white feet. 
there's no scientific proof that one is the case and one isn't. In my opinion, I have seen black feet seem to hold up better than white feet, but that's just my opinion. Look at those feet. Look at how the oil just makes those clinches pop. And here's Jeb again. He's like half asleep, just chilling. Absolutely amazing horse. And that'll about do it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Let us know what you think in the comments.